At the 2007 National Educational Computing Conference in Atlanta, futurist author and keynote speaker Andrew Zolli explained why it's imperative for educators to develop their students' creativity. What would happen if everything that was difficult and rare and expensive in your world became cheap and easy and abundant? What would the world look like? And more importantly, what would happen to the way that we think? Because that's the world we're headed toward eventually. Whether it happens next year, or in a decade, or in a century, it's coming. Well, one of the most important things that's going to happen there, in that future, is that increasingly, virtually anything that can be done by a computer will be done by a computer. And, at the same time, all kinds of things that you and I and the rest of the smartest people in the world who spend time looking at this issue cannot even imagine can be done by computer, will be done by computer. And so that begs the question, what in our optimal future will be left for us to do? What is our job? What it leaves us is a world with a single priority the priority to amplify our own creativity. What is left to humanity is the essence of the creative spirit. And we know now from emerging science that that deep creativity is in all of us. But it's not just students who will need to be creative, Zolli said. There are significant trends that are changing the nature of education, and these will force educators to be creative and adapt as well. One of these is what he called demographic transformation. By the middle of the century, white non-Hispanics, who are the lion's share of the people in this room, will, for the first time in the history of the country, be the largest statistical minority in a society with no racial, cultural, or ethnic majority. And at least one in four of the Americans who are already here will be Hispanic. Meanwhile, MTV, which is a good bellwether of what comes next, is busy experimenting with things like MTV Desi, MTV Chai, MTV K, new brands aimed at new Korean, Chinese, new Asian American teenagers, because they're building credibility and ahead, ahead of demand. They're skating to where the puck is going. And we're going to see lots more of this kind of activity, retooling our systems to an age of the, the future, if I could give it headlines for you, is going to be more intergenerational. It's going to be more multi-ethnic. It's going to be more female than it has ever been before. And we have to prepare our tools to solve those kinds of problems, and in some cases, solving the inverse problem. As boys fall farther and farther behind, we're going to see a push to address the pe unique pedagogical needs of boys, because we're going to have to. This story continues after a brief message from our sponsor. N-Computing's mission is to get a computing station in front of every student at every school. Our technology works by installing an N-Computing PCI card into a normal desktop PC. You then take a simple networking cable and connect it to an N-Station box. All you have to do then is install our software, a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, and you are ready to go. With the N-Computing stations, you can expand one host by up to seven stations. This means that effectively you are turning one PC into the equivalent of seven PCs for a fraction of the cost of buying a new PC. Another trend Zolli highlighted was what he called the tyranny of choice. This is the inside of my grocery store. This is aisle seven. Now, I can't show you the entirety of aisle seven because it is slightly hidden by the curvature of the earth. <laughs> but trust me, if I could take one of my handy National Geographic stun guns around aisle four, take out a stock boil, drag him around aisle seven, and show him one of the 87 varieties of white bread available to me in aisle seven, he'd be of no help whatsoever. I'm on my own, as it were, a wash in choice. And this is a permanent psychic condition for which I've received no educational training. Managing choice is something I suck at. I sit there stupefied for hours. <laughs> Every day,
that goes by in an increasingly network node dense society, every day that we create another open source repository of knowledge, every day that Google and Microsoft and the rest of the world's organizations at scale begin to digitize and add, and every day that your students add more and more content to the network is a day that that green line goes up and that it gets harder for them to get through all that choice. We need interfaces to help us manage choice. In fact, one of the most important pedagogical things you're going to de deliver in the next decade is the technology of managing choice. The final trend he cited was the need to redefine intelligence. Today, when students take the same test, they can bring a programmable mathematics calculator into the test with them. And that is a bridge to a day in which that device contains access to all the world's present information. So the question is, what are we testing when we enable people to come in with the cloud of human knowledge behind them? How will you keep everything else out? And is it even worth keeping everything else out? Well, those questions are big philosophical questions, but the thing I'd like to say is it is inevitable that people will bring those tools with them. And when they do, we have changed the nature of what we test to something a lot more like our ability to find, build, and use complex information tools in real time. It's not that Johnny can't read, it's that Johnny can't build a Boolean query. Johnny doesn't know how to exclusively exclude a set of results in a real-time search that's going to directly correlate to an answer he's going to give. Johnny's connected to 15 other people. It's very hard to keep the social technologies out of all of these environments as well. So one of the things is, who's Johnny got working on his bench? We have nowhere near the metrics we need to measure these skills as of now, Zali said. And that's a key challenge for educators going forward. For eSchool News, I'm Dennis Pierce. ESN TV, your number one source for video news and information from North America's leading EdTech publications from the world's foremost EdTech website, the eSchool News Network, America's EdTech Authority. Watch ESN TV. Encounter the field's most fascinating personalities, the innovators who are turning the old school into the eSchool. Watch ESN TV. Meet notable educators, advocates, and leaders. Watch ESN TV. Get real-time coverage of EdTech's most important gatherings. Stay up to the minute. Get the EdTech news and information you need to succeed. Watch eSchool News TV.